historians have left a large gap in the recording of the fall of Japan in World War II. History books and film documentaries hardly mention Okinawa and the fact that it was the last great land battle of the war. We're all familiar with the raising the flag on the bloody battlefields of Iwo Jima and the dropping of the first atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These events led to Japan's surrender and the end of the Second World War. With the battle in the Pacific moving closer to the mainland of Japan, the Japanese grew more fanatical. They dug in deeper and deeper on each new island they occupied, and by 1945 it had become nearly impossible to root them out by shells and bombs. American commanders realized that they needed improvised weapons to successfully complete the Okinawan campaign. Necessity being the mother of invention. Thus the birth of Operation Blowtorch. The month was November, the year 1944. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas L. McCrary received a set of orders that would surprise even the most seasoned commander. As the commanding officer of the 713th Tank Battalion, he was directed to organize and equip a provisional battalion of flame-throwing tanks. The battalion drew 54 medium tanks to be converted. This was not a new idea. Flame-throwing tanks had been used in Europe by the 771st, but their confidence in them was shaken by mishaps. Even though there were misgivings about these tanks, there was no question that these tanks were desperately needed for the Okinawa operation. The conversions had to be made. The flamethrower conversion of the M4 Sherman tank involved a large number of alterations. Turret baskets had to be ripped out of the tanks and metal containers which held 300 gallons of napalm compound were fastened to the inside of the tanks. CO2 gas was needed to force the napalm out at high pressure. To produce this effect, containers of the gas were also mounted. The breaches of the 75 millimeter gun had to be cut and tubes inserted. The napalm could then enter the barrel and exit through the converted muzzle. The muzzle itself reduced the napalm to a spray, which was in turn ignited to flames by an electrical device. With conversion plans finalized, technicians from the Naval Construction Battalions were recruited to complete the alterations on the M4 tanks. There were no operating manuals for the members of the battalion to use. Therefore, the problems of the napalm expenditure measurements were solved by experimentation. A clock was devised and napalm consumption was ticked off in seconds. Time was running out. The Japanese realized that Okinawa was a likely target for American invasion. Lieutenant General Mitsuru Ushijima fortified the natural defensive strength of Okinawa's mountains, especially in the southern part of the island. Ushijima intended to permit the Americans to come ashore without opposition. This would allow time to prepare for the coordination of a land and sea strike. On March 4, 1945, at 0900 hours, the 713th left Pearl Harbor for Okinawa. Operation Okinawa was already underway by the time the 713th arrived at Shima on April 7, 1945. The Japanese had dug in deep to protect themselves from the bombardment of American military fire. On April 19, 1945, the Japanese experienced the first terrifying attack of the flame-throwing M4s. From that day on, a general cry went up and down the front lines. Hey, Zippo, come on! The Japanese soldier, confident he was safe from even the power of the 75mm gun, was surprised when his safe place became a flaming trap.
Because of its effectiveness, the Blowtorch Battalion earned the love and respect of the American foot soldier. The 713th Flamethrower, the infantry, and other armored divisions worked and lived together as one unit. They successfully completed numerous missions that were ne necessary to bring the Okinawan campaign to a victorious end. see the 713 flamethrower tents come up and when they seen them they was happy and when they what would happen they had radios on the back of the tank and the infantry would follow the tank and tell the tank where to go and tell the tank where to shoot the flame and this was how they close they were working together so that the tank protected the infantry, and yet the tank shot the flame out to kill the enemy. That there was a good deal of Japanese that the flamethrowers killed, that the infantry didn't have to, and the infantry didn't or have to worry about them killing them. debate whether it's going to be this or going to be that and usually it was a case that they wanted to do something with the Japs because there was no secret about what the Japs was doing to, every, to all the troops and the people and like that that they was conquering over there in the Pacific area. Uh, they just wanted to get in there and eliminate the Japs the best way they could. And if this was it, this was it because it was, they came up with the, the bit as to why they were going to do this, change it over into the flamethrowers. And that was because of the situation came back that Okinawa was all full of tunnels and the Japs was all dug in and like that. And it would be impossible to shoot and get at them. So they had to burn them out. And this was the best way to get at it. So it was, this is what went about and it was, didn't seem to create any problems or bad feelings against any of the personnel.
and we were split up on, to, uh, throughout the whole organization. Someone with A company, someone with B company, someone with C company, and then we were to direct the firing of the tanks. If the infantry couldn't get close enough to them that they could use their phone, we were in the back, a little further back, and we had a, they called 5010 radios on our backs. And then we could stay in touch with all the tanks. Now when we called them, we told them exactly where the enemy was, because we always were on a high area where we could overlook the whole situation. <coughs> and we can also see where all the fire was covered in from, where the they firepower was. And that's how we used to direct them. And many times, uh, we <laughs> the fire was so heavy that we had to jump on the tank and get the heck out of there with them because it was getting too heavy. They, they, the guns outshot us, so sometimes we had to withdraw a little bit. And then we called different tanks in, which the different tanks fired in a distance where we saw the flames. When the cannon fires, there is a slight flame. And we used to observe that. And if you used to see any of those light flames, by the way, we take the coordinates on the map, we call it in, and they fire at that. And uh, within two or three rounds, they most likely, they knock them out. But that's how we... took back, we didn't get too far with them, but uh, we took some women and children, we took them back. But if he was a soldier, uh, he didn't have much of a chance.
The 713th Flamethrower Battalion received from General Zahn down only the highest praise for a consistently outstanding record of performance. The unit received a presidential unit citation, as well as citations for individual missions. Here are some excerpts from several of those citations. The infantry's Lieutenant Colonel Edward Stair commended the 713th for its invaluable assistance during each attack phase of the final drive against the enemy lines near Koki. The flamethrower tanks were literally the straw that broke the camel's back. Immediately after the flamethrower tanks had gone into action, the infantry was able to rapidly advance. He continued to praise the men of the 713th for the courageous manner in which they performed and hoped that in future operations, the 713th would be in support of his battalion. Colonel Stephen S. Hamilton of the 307th Infantry expressed his appreciation of the 713th for their excellent support rendered in the reduction of the Japanese strong point in the outer Shuri defense system. He continues to say that all personnel of the 713th gave the closest cooperation and aid to further the advance of the combat team and assisted in the capture of enemy positions. Another commendation came from the headquarters of the 763rd Tank Battalion. It stated that all members of the 713th should be commended for their fine performance during the period from April 8th to April 30th, 1945. Each man and officer acted in a manner that brought the highest credit to the unit. All company commanders expressed their satisfaction at the ease and efficiency of the 713th's ability to become an integral part of the 763rd Battalion. Cooperation was at all times superior, and they were always ready and willing to undertake any assigned mission, no matter how difficult the terrain or complicated the mission. Even Major General J. L. Bradley expressed his appreciation of the excellent spirit and accomplishments of the 713th. Colonel John M. Finn, commanding officer of the 32nd Infantry, went into great detail describing his appreciation. He stated that the flamethrower tanks were an innovation to his regiment. They were effective against the Japanese position on Skyland Ridge and showed their true worth at Coral Caves on Hill 95. The Japanese were in position over the whole escarpment, and the rugged caves and pinnacles offered natural defensive positions and cover. In many places, it was almost impossible to blast out the fenders with artillery and mortal fire. He continues to say that, it became apparent that the positions could only be taken at a great loss of life and some means of routing out the enemy. The flamethrower tanks were brought forward. The flames licked into the caves and crevices and burned many Japanese at their positions. But the most remarkable effect was the terror instilled in the heart of the enemy. Colonel Finn then continues to praise the men who manned the tanks. It was through their courage and devotion to duty that the tanks were moved into position where the flame could take effect. Where tanks could not reach the enemy positions with direct flame, the men did not hesitate to man the hoses and scale the coral cliffs to burn out the enemy. Two members of the 713th, 
were awarded the Silver Star Medal for their performances of duty which typified the dedication of all members of the 713th. The feelings of the infantry frontline soldiers were illustrated by the remark, These guys are okay. They're willing to fight and howl. Even Major General A. V. Arnold was moved by the outstanding performance of the 713th. He sent a personal accommodation to the battalion, saying it gave him great pleasure in commending all officers and men of the 713th for the outstanding performance of duty against a bitterly resisting enemy. Their contribution was very important to the winning of such battles as the Yodek Escarpment, Hill 95, Hill 115, Hill 89, Yonabaru, the Shuri Line, and other strategic points during Operation Iceberg. In 70 days of continuous operations on Okinawa, 41 tanks were put out of commission by enemy actions. All but two were repaired and returned to service. 4,788 Japanese were killed and 49 captured. The world's only flame-throwing tank battalion had 724 officers and men. Eight men were killed in action and 210 wounded, missing, and injured in combat. They had a headquarters and a service company, A, B, C companies, and a medic detachment. Now in the northern part of Okinawa, was more flat terrain and the uh, Japanese didn't have the opportunity to dig in in the northern part like they did the southern part. So this was basically the biggest obstacle that the United States Army had to become to get over. That the Marines, they went to the north and they had relatively smoother operation going north, and the army went south. That's where they met all the opposition where the Japs all dug in. They were dug into the mountains, and when the, the army would shell them, well then they'd go back into the caves, but as soon as they stopped shelling them, they would come out and they would start shooting the troops again. Prior to combat, the 713th maneuvered in the pineapple fields of Hawaii. After the combat missions were completed in Okinawa, the 713th was sent to Korea as an occupational force. They continued to uphold the excellent reputation they had earned in Okinawa.